I see a lot of confusion in the knife community about what steels will actually form the super hard tungsten monocarbide, dyed tungsten monocarbides that are crazy hard. What steels form that? And a lot of people, they get a lot of tunnel vision on how much percent weight tungsten there is inside the steel. That doesn't tell you how much carbide of that type is formed. That's just a pile of ingredients inside the steel. A carbide is a mix between the carbon element and any of these transitional metal elements inside the steel. All right, we've got tungsten, vanadium, chromium that we could see here. There's other ones that we see in this steel. That's what we're going to talk about here. So why? Why don't we get that super hard tungsten monocarbide, dyed tungsten monocarbide inside of Maximet? Look at all that tungsten. Super tunnel vision on that. All right, and we're going to get into that. Now, first off, the carbon is an interstitial element inside the steel. It can move around inside the steel. When it's diffusing, the carbon's able to move a lot more freely. It's a lot smaller than the surrounding iron atoms. It can diffuse and move around. Now, these other metallic elements, tungsten, vanadium, chromium, not so much, okay? They can move, but they just can't move as freely as the carbon. So the carbon kind of gets its pick of what it wants to form with. All right, we're really simplifying this here. Now, the big problem with tungsten is its outer electron shell is pretty much filled up, all right? Since a carbide is a bond that's formed between these metallic elements and the carbon, if that outer electron shell is pretty much filled up, it's not gonna have a huge propensity for making carbide. So that's what we call a weak carbide former. Okay, there's carbide forming strength, all right? That's not the same thing as how strong and hard the carbide is, but being a strong or weak carbide former has to do with what is its propensity for being formed inside the steel. And tungsten is very weak very weak. So what I'm basically trying to point out here is that in any air hardening tungsten rich tool steel, you're not getting tungsten monocarbide or di tungsten monocarbides inside that steel. What you're getting instead is a mixed carbide. It's called M6C. It's very tungsten rich, could be very molybdenum rich. And what this carbide is, it's not as hard as a lot of the very hard chromium carbides. So it's a tier below that. All right. The hardness Vickers is about 1,600. Some of your chromium carbides can run about 1,800 to 2,000. Vanadium carbides are running up to 2,800 to 3,000 Vickers, so significantly harder the vanadium carbides. So in a steel like Maximet, what's really promoting the wear resistance is the vanadium. What's making Maximet so hard, okay, it's not the fact that it has tungsten carbides in there, all right? That's a completely different subject. Now. The tungsten is contributing in other ways to make the steel hard, but that's also another subject we're not talking about in this video. We're talking about what carbides form for wear resistance, all right? And wear resistance also, by itself, is not the end-all, be-all, okay? Hardness is also important for expressing wear resistance. Again, that's another subject for another video. My whole point here is that no matter how much tungsten we cram inside of an air-hardening tool steel, it's not going to form the super hard 2,500 Vickers, still softer than vanadium carbides inside steel, 2,500 Vickers hardness, okay, tungsten monocarbide. You just don't get that phase inside these steels. Now, there is a way to get it, but we have to drop a lot of these other metallic elements. So we have to go over to something like we can do super blue. I don't know, they probably have it in here as Aogami Super, which is just... Japanese for blue paper. Now, if we look at this steel right here, this steel will actually form tungsten monocarbides in here, all right, upwards of around 3%, all right? Now, <laughs> that doesn't have to do, you can't just look at a steel and be like, oh, that's gonna form about, uh, actually, that's gonna form 2.5%. Like, these are just the ingredients in the steel. In order to actually see how much volume and what types of carbides are formed, I'm sorry, they just, there's no way you could just do that by looking at this. You can make assumptions, but to be honest, what's used by people to see exact percentages or predictions is what they'll do is they'll use special thermodynamic software that's not available to the public. Things like MT Data, ThermoCalc, JMAT Pro. You plug in a chemistry into those types of programs, and what they'll do is they'll show you, okay, well, this is how much percent you're forming of this carbide and how much percent you're forming of that carbide. And you can be pleasantly surprised, you know, if you plug in some of these different chemistries into some of that stuff. But again, sorry, that stuff is just isn't available to the public. 
You can go to Knife Skill Nerds, though, and you can look up a lot of these different things, and you can try to search around and find, okay, well, that's how much carbide, that's how much carbide volume is formed with this steel. And you get 13% of this type and 9% of that type, etc. That's just kind of what you have to do. Another way you can do something is you can take a micrograph of a steel, do a point counting system where you draw up some grid lines and you add up all the different carbides and divide it by the grid lines and that'll give you a percentage of carbide volume in there. That's not going to tell you what percentage of what type you get. If you use a scanning electron microscope though, what you can do is uh, because you're bouncing these electrons off these different carbides, you can see that some of these different carbides based on their composition will show up as different colors. Vanadium carbides show up as a darker gray, blackish color and your more tungsten moly rich show up as more of a whiter color which is very interesting and then you could also use EDX which is kind of a special thing with scanning electron microscopes a special feature that some of those scanning electron microscopes can have and they can actually measure the composition of those carbides and you can see okay well this is a very vanadium rich carbide so that's got to be your vanadium carbide and oh look at that that's a very tungsten rich carbide uh, it's also got some molybdenum in there, huh? Check that out. And if you were to measure the micro hardness of that carbide, you'd be like, oh, that's really soft. Oh, okay, well, that's not your tungsten monocarbide because there's other competition in these types of steels. So Aogami Super, while we have this super hard tungsten monocarbide, it's only in there at about 3%. It's not significantly enough to boost the wear resistance to go smoke stuff like Maximet or anything like that. I know some people, they take stuff at very face value. They get real tunneled in on some things that you say in a video and they'll be like, They'll kind of scratch their head after they watch a video like this and be like, oh, is he saying that Super Blue is going to outcut Maximat? No. No, this Aogami Super is not very wear resistant. It's not. But it actually does have the contribution of a very hard tungsten monocarbide, which makes it really, really interesting. It doesn't make it any kind of smoker on rope cut testing or any of that stuff. It does make it a really fun steel. It can get pretty hard. Not because of that, but other reasons. And... It's good stuff, man. I really enjoy it. But if you want tungsten monocarbide, you have to drop all the other basically carbide forming elements. And it's really difficult to do that and still have an air hardening tool steel. There's been a few in the past that have done something like that, like Highwear 64, where they drop chromium for manganese, which isn't a very strong carbide former. And you were able to form a lot of the tungsten monocarbides, but that steel doesn't exist. The whole industry has moved towards chromium air hardening tool steels just because they just anneal much better. And you're just not gonna get tungsten monocarbide or dyed tungsten monocarbide in any air hardening tool steel. I don't know how much more I can just hammer that into people. None of them. Look at this one. This is T4. Check out the T4. Holy smokes, look at that. In the high range of this chemistry, 19% tungsten. That's gotta have it. That has to have it. Wait a second. Look at the chromium percentage. That means it's an air hardening tool steel. All right, You're just not gonna get it. Doesn't work that way. This is gonna just have a huge volume of M6C tungsten rich, moly rich carbides, okay? Those are not as hard as chromium carbides. They range 1600 hardness vickers. Chromium carbides, depending on their type and how rich they are, they can range from 1800 all the way up to 2000. Okay, so M6C, even though it has tungsten, which is a hard metal, hard metal atom inside inside the carbide unit cell right it's hanging out in there super hard it's just not as hard as some of these other carbides you can get and you're not going to get the really hard phase of tungsten carbide just because it's weak at forming carbides and so I just want to hammer that home because i put out a lot of videos i like to share a lot of different steels with crazy heat treats and stuff with you guys you guys know me uh, but at the same time, I just get a little tired of, you know, when I get somebody in the comments, there's a lot of M4 fanboys, and I get it. It's the most available steel and a lot of different knives that companies will actually touch because a lot of these knife companies still haven't caught up. They haven't caught up to all the really cool steels that are out there, so a lot more people have gotten their chance to experience M4. And they'll look at the M4 chemistry. We'll pull up M4, and they'll be like, well, yeah, that's cool and all that you like 4V, but, you know, if we look at, okay, I'll type in CPMM4 just because people will point out in this video, well, you're not, you didn't point out the CPMM4, man. The same chemistry. <laughs> no, I got to space that out there. Come on, buddy. People will look at something like M4 and they'll be like, oh my God, look, you got 5% tungsten. That's a lot. 
That's a lot of tungsten. You must be getting a lot of tungsten carbides. Nope. Same thing. Air hardening tool steel. Competition for carbide formation. M6C is what you're getting, brother. And here's another interesting thing. That's weight percent mass. And tungsten's just heavy. If we look at the atom count, look at tungsten now. Woo, shit, look at that. You don't even really get that much tungsten, really. Because look at that, this is the atom count, basically, huh? <laughs> We're looking at it atomically, I should say. It's not the count of atom, but just atomically. A lot less tungsten. But if you're going by mass, whoa, since tungsten's so heavy, yeah, it looks like you're getting a ton of tungsten, but you're not. So hope this video was informative. You know, this is a very deep and complex subject. We'll have to make several videos about this, I'm sure. The whole point is, is that in all air hardening, tungsten rich tool steels, there is zero WC, W2C carbides that are formed. Zero. Tungsten monocarbide, dye tungsten monocarbides inside of those steels. Sorry. All M6C. And sometimes that's not a bad thing. And we can get more into why those types of steels get super, super hard but it doesn't have to do with that type of carbide that's formed inside that steel. Sorry, it's not that simple. We'll talk about that at a later time. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.